I want a super smelter. And the reason why I want a super smelter is because I use a lot of black glass and I like using black glass. And my plans for this episode are to make a bamboo farm, a crazy, crazy bamboo farm. And I need a lot of black glass to make this bamboo farm. And right now I just have this shulker box of sand and I'm gonna have to go borrow crazy's super smelter. So I want a super smelter. And then I'll start with building this bamboo farm, which is gonna be from all the way from that little piece of ice that you see way over there, all the way over here. I think it's gonna be about 40 by 100 blocks long. It's gonna fill that whole section. Start of this episode, I think I want to hook up the water streams. So we're getting the overflow of bone meal into here so that we can get the melons, the pumpkins, and the sugar cane all up here. I'm thinking I might even tear down the sugar cane farm that's over there and move it over to this section at some point. So the first thing I need to do is make a path that goes over this way. Wow, so I already started uh, to make this path over uh, to this area. I'm gonna have these, this farm right here split off. And this is gonna be the stuff that I'm actually gonna collect up top in the head. But then all the melons from over here are just gonna be turned into bone meal to power the tree farm. And I'll only really turn on the melons when I'm doing the tree farm. Um, I'm also gonna need to hook up um, some reserve sugar cane. Uh, to go up into the head as well because I want to get this sugar cane into the head so we can just make our rockets up there. The thing is I was making this and I already ran out of black glass. So I need to go turn this shulker box full of sand into glass at uh, Crazy's base. And this is why I need a super smelter. I use this super smelter way more than I thought I would. Like I use this all the time and I, I definitely need to get one of these in my base. Flip plop bloop. And we just watch all of the glass flow in. Bleep, blop, bloop, bleep, 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 bloop, blop, bloop. Let's just buy some black dye from Cyber. Now we have more black glass and we can get back to work. I hooked up this water stream all the way. I still need to hook up the water stream that is going to come from the sugar cane. And now I just need to make an automatic dispenser into the water stream and then cover this all up with the black glass. I'm literally just going to copy the one I did right over there. And I think to do that. I just went like that. I'm gonna need these sticky pistons just like that. Two observers going like this. Uh, just temporary blocks right there. Uh, these ones are gonna be piston or observers facing this way. And then I think I can take these out and then all I need to do is put a comparator right under here and this should be good to go if I can get the angle on it. There we go. Oh wait, I didn't set up the filters yet. Stop, 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 stop. But it does look like all these items are going through all of the canals perfectly. They are coming up. Uh, the bone meal is already set up, I guess. Um, I just need to set up the filters on the melons and the pumpkins. Okay, so I set up all the filters up there so we can go ahead and put these back. And there we go. Oh my gosh, look at this stuff just dump out. <laughs> That is so awesome. I made this same circuit over here and I hooked up this water stream as well. Just need to put in this last observer. And now all of our sugar cane is coming out. So now I can just fill all of this stuff up. All right, cover this up with the black glass. Oh my gosh, look how satisfying that is. Look at all these resources going into the collection system. Wow, I'm so happy I hooked all this up. All we need to hook up now is uh, the honey farm over here. So we just have to make uh, some kind of line from there over to over to here. Okay, so now I got the honey farm all hooked up so we can put the bottles in there. They will shoot out the bottom. They will make their way all the way up into our brain up here and into the correctly sorted chest. Here, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did with this chest in here. So I've made all of these back into honey blocks and I put all the bottles back into the honey farm. Uh, there's an overflow chest here. And now we have this whole row all done, which I'm really excited to have this whole row all done. Now we can get started on what's gonna go over on this end. And I also wanna do some stuff to up top, but I do wanna get it filled out a little bit more before I work on the stuff up there. 
Now with all of that all done and it's all hooked up and all coming into the brain. Wow, that feels super satisfying getting this whole wall done. I've been meaning to do that for a while. But now we can finally go on to how the super smelter is going to work. And we're going to have a super smelter right over here somewhere, just somewhere in this general area. And then this is going to be a massive bamboo farm to power the super smelter. This circuit right here is a one wide tileable system. And what this does is it actually stops the hopper minecart. So there's going to be hopper minecarts that go along. This is going to be the bamboo farm. They're going to go along and pick up all the drops. The hopper minecarts are going to come up here. They're going to stop on this rail right here with this system. Not only is this system going to stop the hopper minecart while it's dropping off its goods, it's also going to power this dropper as there is stuff in the dropper. So it's gonna, this dropper is going to stay powered by uh, this observer right here with this observer clock and it's going to shoot out all the items along this trail and then that's how we're going to get all the bamboo over to the super smelter. So this, this whole circuit, it was really two circuits. One is the stop the hopper minecart when it's on top. And the way that works is that we have a redstone torch over there that's powering that block that's going to this repeater powering this block which then powers that. But when there is stuff in this hopper, this comparator is going to say, okay, there's stuff in the hopper. It's going to depower that redstone torch. That powered rail is then going to have no power in it. And it's going to stop the hopper minecart on top of that hopper. So it's going to put everything into the dropper. The second part is making sure that everything in the dropper gets shot into the water stream. So the way this works is that this uh, comparator is able to take um, an input from the dropper through here, actually. So if we put stuff in there, as you can see, the... Um, the comparator picked that up and said, okay, there's stuff in this dropper. The comparator is going to put power into this solid block, and it's also going to transfer it down into this solid block, which then powers the piston. But the piston does need an update, so this can't just be any solid block. That is why we're using a note block here. So the power from this comparator goes into this solid block, and it actually goes down into this piston. Uh, but the piston doesn't get updated when there's power in it until there's a block update. Just like that. So I can take this away and that's gonna stay there even when I turn that off until there's another block update. So that's why we use these note blocks because when the power goes in the note block, it updates the note block, which then sends an update into the piston, which then triggers the piston and makes the observer clock. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys an example right here. Let's say this is full of uh, bamboo and then it's gonna come up here. It's gonna come up the track and then stops up there and it puts all of the uh, bamboo into the dropper. The dropper then shoots it out. So it's working perfectly. This is exactly what we want to do. We want the hopper minecart to stop there and then all the items to get shot along this water stream. And then the hopper goes along its way once it's empty. Okay, so perfect. Now we just need to fill in this huge area with the bamboo farm and that's gonna be a task. And I'll probably save that for a live stream. I put a lot of time and effort into my videos and I would really appreciate it if you left to subscribe. It's free, it only takes about two seconds and you can always unsubscribe later if you really want. Come play some Minecraft and hang out with me live on Twitch. Check the description for the link. What I do wanna do right now uh, while we're waiting for me to have a live stream is I want to make a sort of machine that initiates people into the cult. Uh, cause I do want to initiate people into the cult so we can get that free labor that DK was talking about, but I'm going to have to, I want to make it fun. You know, I want them to go through a process to get initiated. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go over to the cult clubhouse and, uh, work on a machine. Oh my gosh. This thing is absolutely mega to just fly into. I think I want to create a room over on this backside over here. So maybe like utilize this space for some kind of initiation. So the first thing I'm going to have to do then is actually build up a little room back here. I'm thinking maybe we have like an entrance to the initiation back here somewhere. And then we make people uh, ride through on like a minecart or something and make some kind of ride. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking right now. All right, so here's the wall. I think this is how high I wanna make this room. I think there's plenty of room in here to make several uh, sub rooms in here. So now I just need to turn all this into actual concrete so i just let it flow down like that and this is super satisfying to watch especially if you watch it from the back oh yeah that looks so cool okay so now with all of that uh turned into concrete um i guess i need to turn all of these walls also into concrete just so it's all just the gray concrete and then i need to put a roof over this thing well i ran out of gray concrete so here i am making more gray concrete 
Oh my gosh, this took way longer than I wanted to. Look how hungry I am and slurp, 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 slurp. Let me just eat up my honey. So this is the room that we're gonna be using. Oh, uh, there's not like an official door to this place. I think if we just break in like right. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I made a mob farm. Oh, that is so gnarly. Okay, so now I've lit this whole place up and I've also constructed the first little uh, part of this initiation process. So we're gonna have people go in like this and then the door is gonna shut behind them. So I want it to be a closing door. And I just have a detector rail hooked up with a little bit of delay up into this piston wall so that this is gonna open up and let them in and then it's gonna close right behind them. It's also gonna make it so that it stays dark in here because I kind of want it to be a little bit dark and spooky. And now what the idea is, is we're gonna take them around in this minecart to different uh, like torture areas or different areas where they're gonna get hurt. Um, and then eventually I kind of want a little bit of a big surprise at the end for when they actually get initiated. Okay, I've been putting a lot of thought into what's going to happen here. And I think they're going to fall in. They're going to come in here. They're going to come up to here. There's going to be arrows shut out them from dispensers, get their health down a little bit, you know, scare them a little bit. Then they're going to come over this way. I think I'm going to say, have a sign that says look up. And there's going to be lava falling at them. But I'm going to move them out of the way before the lava actually hits them. I want to time it so that it's like actually scary. And then I'm going to have them come along here. And we're gonna have TNT drop literally right next to him. So I'm gonna have to make like some kind of obsidian room right here. Um, I kind of want to lift them up off the ground and then like drop them at the last second. So they just drop down and, and continue on. So I gotta think about how I'm gonna do that. I'm thinking like a TNT uh, blast resistant room up top of obsidian and then just drop them down at the last second. Um, and then I'm gonna have them go up top. It's gonna, or maybe I'll have them run along this. And I wanna fill this up with creepers, hopefully with the black glass and when it's dark in here. They won't see the glass and they'll think there's a bunch of creepers here that are gonna explode and uh, kill them. And then I'm gonna have some messaging up top there where I'm gonna run them slow along the messaging, but I don't keep that a surprise. And then I'm gonna have the grand finale and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'm gonna toss up between two things and I'm also gonna keep that a surprise, but we'll go through all this technical stuff like the arrow dispensing and the lava falling and the TNT duping. And uh, I'll show you guys how I plan on getting the creepers in here. And then you're gonna have to see the rest when I actually use this thing on myself. Okay, so I've gotten quite a bit of work done and I'll show you what I've done. So this is the arrow dispensing area. And then this is where the TNT is gonna drop or the lava is gonna drop. But I also have finally got some creepers in here. So I'm gonna have to open up some of the bottom of here and try and get in here and tag these guys. So let's see if I can get, oh, okay. So these guys are tucked in the corner so I can get them just by going like that. So I got one, I think I got that one. So I need to get the one in the corner. I can't lose sight of him. All right, we got two, we got two. Okay, so we got two now and I wanna fill this up. And the way that I was able to fill this cause it was really hard to get these guys to come in here or to spawn in here. But what we want to do is we want to fly up high enough to where we're up high in the sky and there's nothing else that's able to spawn. And then if we come down right here, we're literally right on top of that chamber. And then we're going to be spawning in mobs. So I can kind of see uh, stuff when it spawns in down there. And that should be like the only spawnable space. And I'm the only one online, so that helps a lot. So right there, I just saw a bunch of stuff spawn in. So then what we have to do is we come down here and see what it is. And hopefully it was more creepers. So it looks like, yeah, there's two more creepers in here than there was before. And now I have to just get in here and tag them without them blowing everything up. Okay, so I got name tags all the creepers and that's the creepers, but... <laughs> I've been at this for literally hours, like uh, literally hours since I uh, last checked in and it's all done. I just need to dress it up and I kind of want to go over. I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the first half of it. I don't want to show you the second half uh, just because I want it to be a surprise even for you guys. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how this works. So we put down a minecart here. The person gets in. We press the button. They get sent inside. The first part is all these arrows getting shot at you, which is just kind of funny. They're actually supposed to be able to heal from that. Then this is a lava pit where the lava just slowly falls on them. And, you know, they're not really supposed to get out of the cart, but even if they did, they would probably die. So it's probably it's safe for them to the, actually stay in the cart. They actually go into the lava a little bit. As you can see, I lost a lot of health there. Hopefully I recover from that. I don't actually die. Then we have a TNT duping station where the TNT falls down. Oh, I might actually die. I did die. And then here are the creepers. 
So it looks like I need a little bit extra recalibration and I'm not going to show you guys what's upstairs. I actually want to save that for uh, when I initiate myself and then uh, everyone else. Okay, so I need to do slight recalibrations. I also need to dress it up so it doesn't just look like this. Like I wanted to, so you can't see everything that's really going on. But let's go ahead and talk about each of these uh, separate steps. So even this first one, it has this detector rail and the detector rail actually tells when you're on that. And then that's gonna open this up. It's gonna open up this piston door, which if we come back here, we can see what's going on. We just have a redstone line that goes in here and then opens up the door and then it'll shut the door again right after. And then the next part of it is these arrows getting shot at you. Now here's a detector rail, which uh, then this is a pulse extender right here. Just a simple pulse extender going right here. And then it goes into this um, comparator clock, which then shoots all of the uh, arrows out at the, at the person going through all this. Then the next part is the lava part right here. We have a detector rail that tells when they go in there. Um, and then the detector rail makes it so that it releases the lava. It also stops the lava from falling just so that it collects itself. And then the lava stays inside of the uh, dispenser up there. But there's also a second timer that comes off that same detector rail. And then that comes this way. And then it goes on this huge delay. So this delay takes its time and then it goes back and then it goes under uh, to this contraption right here. And then that's what actually lets the player out of the lava and then they shoot down onto the track again. Then once they're on this track, there's another detector rail right here. There is a timer back there. This is the TNT duper. They go into this obsidian room. The timer down here does two things. It one, it makes it so that the TNT duplicates so you get to see it and it explodes right next to you. But then it also triggers uh, this right here. So we have this ancient debris right here because the ancient debris will not blow up from the TNT but you can move it with a sticky piston. So we're able to make this part with that. So you go ahead and fall on that and then the TNT blows up and uh, this lets you out. And then you come across and then you just go in front of the creepers then you go up into the uh, finale area up top. And yeah, I'm super proud of this thing. This thing was absolutely crazy. There's a lot of slime blocks, limestone, redstone going on here that I had to engineer. And it took me literally like a couple of days to get all this done. So I'm really excited to go through this thing officially and initiate myself and then for everyone else to go through this as well. All right, I, I, I finished dressing the thing up and it's all it's all done inside. It's a, it's a little more frightening the way it is right now. And I, uh, me and DK, we need to, um, we need to initiate ourselves. So, so we are going to initiate you into the doomsday cult. I will become the leader of the cult, yes. No, 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 I did, I, no, no, no. But you will be, you will be the first person initiated. Uh, that is the fact. The first, the best, the winner. I need, I need some kind of uh, payment or object to get into this cult to, as, as kind of like collateral. I, I need literally the most valuable object you own. That will be my bed. Um, last time I remember, I let you borrow it. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of gave that away to um, the ab abfielder. Has that now? You you gave away my bed? Yeah. Yep. You were you were there. It was on Christmas. I it was in it was in a present to him. Are you are you gonna burn it in some sac sacrificial flames if I if I bring out my my second most valuable belonging ever? I can't promise that I will not do that, but I will promise that I will put it in this chest right after you give it to me. Right out in the open, in the most secure place, in the middle of our sky hole. Well, I have I have a thing. It's quite valuable. A potato? It's a, uh, it's an heirloom. Is that Billy's potato? It's an heirloom. It, it's it, mine. You, you stole the potato of, of my son, Billy? I, I, I can neither confirm nor, nor deny these rumors. All right, fine. Just hand, hand it over. Hand it over. I mean, I need to check its authenticity. I need to make sure this is actually a Billy potato real quick. Let me just... Yep. Looks. Yep. I remember that bump. Yep. That little sprout has always been there. This is, in fact, Billy's potato. I will validate this for you. Taste, taste Billy's sweat on it, dude. Yep. Yep. Sound, smells just like Billy. 
Tastes just it does, like yeah. Jelly. Yeah. I'm, I've been keeping it under my pillow, so I mean, it might, it might have a little bit of my earwax, but that's about it. Okay, so this is gonna go in here for safekeeping. This is gonna be all the valuable stuff in the most secure location right here in the room. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody touches that. Here, here, dude, I, I, I locked it for you. It's little, it's little. You can't like take stuff out of it because I put this sign right next to it, and since I put that sign right there, it's like impossible to take stuff. Okay, so now that that's been validated and that's your, that's your most valuable item, press this button. I promise you won't die. Okay, so you should have got a minecart. Read, read these signs. There's, there's supposed to be a sign on this side that says "P.S. I'm not liable," but it, it's so small you can't even see. Ah, oh, I, I see it. It's right down here in the corner. Like I have, I have extremely good vision. I don't know if you knew this about me. Yeah. No. Okay. Good. So, so you saw the disclaimer there. That's good. That's good. So now, yeah, now we just it's right there. We need to step into this room. I need you to. Uh, Set your Ooh, spawn this point. Is fancy. You put carpets in for me? Yes, yes. Very soft, nice, very nice carpets. Nice. So now I need Ooh. you to set your spawn point, put anything you have in this chest, otherwise you may or may not lose it. Okay. I put and my minecart in my chest. No, okay, the, you need the minecart. You need to put the minecart oh. down on the rail right here. But you set everything I own. And then get and in now, it. What and now you get in the minecart? No, you, you okay. get in the minecart. <laughs> After you, good sir. Oh. No, no, get in the... Okay, now, now the sacrif... The, I mean the, uh, the ritual. The booga. Booga booga. Booga booga booga. Booga booga booga. Booga booga booga. Um, yeah, have fun. Enjoy the ride. Keep your hands and feet inside of the cart at all times. Uh, make sure you look around and observe while you're here. Um, what happens if and... I stick my, my thumb out? You may uh, lose it. Yeah, you may lose huh. it. I, I was never attached to that thumb. And if you get too scared and want me to pull you out, that is not an option, so... Yep. Okay. Bye. Later! Well, this is boring. What, what's he even up to? Ooh, I get arrows? Nice! Look up. Oh, this, this, uh... Hi, Lava. Ah, I see where he's going with this, and then there's a glass coming in. It'll save me. Okay, I, I wasn't saved by the glass. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's a little rude. <laughs> Wait, that, that's, that's the TNT. Ha! Huh. Missed me! Yeah, yo, it's a dark hallway. Boom boys! Boom boys! Man, man! Baby boys! It's not probing time! <laughs> Green boy trying to throw me. Whoa! Oh, oh. Ooh. All hail, dude of the dust. The loser. He sells favors. <laughs> if. From the world's end. He's somebody thinking a lot about himself now. <laughs> and show us how to. How to what? Fail at everything here? You need the simulation. Oh, I'm the one that told him it was a simulation in the first place. It's all a simulation. I told him that. <laughs> Ew. What? Oh, hello. Rockets! <laughs> <laughs> you are you are the first official member of the Doomsday Cult. How does it feel? Say I feel alive, but I feel I've been lied to, betrayed, and I lost the arrows I was given. Uh, we'll come out here and look at the world, see if it looks a little bit different now. It's like a genuine shade of pink to the world now. <laughs> like, a shade I, of pink? I, I, I must have been saved, dude. Yeah, you know, like, I see at least 50 shades of pink out here. Well, welcome Here's to the cult. You're, you're, the, you're the first official member. I'm going to have to go through myself now. Okay, well, well, dude, dude, before before you do that, t if you want a piece of friendly advice, um, you should totally vote EK in as the leader of the cult. Good luck. Okay, so I think that was a successful first run of this initiation machine. I'm actually out of time, so I'm gonna have to show you guys what the machine looks like in the next episode. This episode has been very, very long. I'm excited to get to 
uh, initiating more people into the cult. There's a bunch of people who have shown interest, so now I just gotta initiate them. And uh, I also want to get to that bamboo farm and get the super smelter going. This is all stuff that is coming up. I'm very excited. Thank you so much for watching this one. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you to all my patrons for all of your support. I could not be doing this without you.